Hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Craig. Welcome to the Battery Shop. Usually replacing your battery just requires some basic hand tools, some wrenches, a screwdriver perhaps, uh, but sometimes you need some specialized tools, various different bits that may have 12 points to it uh, for certain fasteners, and sometimes you even need a torque wrench. Yeah, and some other tools that are useful when uh, replacing a battery would be a battery puller tool, looks like a scissors, has a handle, and helps to remove a battery when you don't have a handle on the battery. Uh, another type of tool we use in the battery shop, a uh, cleaner tool, cleans the terminals, it cleans the cable clamps, it's a wire brush. Uh, other tools that are useful would be a cable puller tool. Uh, it helps to extract the cables when they're stuck on the terminals and you can't quite get it off. Although this battery is easy to get to on this vehicle, uh, sometimes it's, it's not because, first of all, you have to find it. It may not be under the hood. Right, sometimes we find them under the seats or in the trunk. Uh, and sometimes in the floor. Or even a wheel well. Or to remove lots of parts to actually get to it. That's right. So one of the best things you can do is look at your vehicle's owner manual. And that should give you the information you need to find the battery and perhaps other information you might need as to how to get to the battery. One other thing you might want to consider is a service repair manual. We here at the battery shop use that type of information all the time. Uh, you can buy them in uh, auto parts stores, at the car dealership, and online. And we use an online database. It's uh, very helpful for us because it's quite detailed in what you have to do in order to successfully uh, change a battery and get it right the first time. We always recommend that you use gloves and safety glasses when you're working on and around batteries. This particular vehicle has a lot of computers, and if I disconnect the battery without using something to keep the computer's memories alive, there may be a lot of reset procedures that we may have to do and might even need some special tools for that. So we like to use a memory saver. And in this case, it's just jumper cables connected to another car battery. And so what I'm gonna do is connect, I've already got the positive one connected, now I'm just going to connect the negative one to the cable. And now when I disconnect the cables from the battery, the vehicle still has plenty of power to keep all the computer's memories alive. We don't have to worry about any resets. The first step is to remove the negative battery cable from the negative battery terminal. In most cases, it will be one single nut that will be loosened in order to remove the cable. And then remove the positive battery cable from the positive battery terminal. The terminal cables come in various shapes and sizes. Some are big and bulky and some are smaller. Uh, but in all cases, you're going to need to remove this in order to replace the battery. Yep. And on some vehicles, there may not be a cable hooked directly to the battery post, but some sort of an electrical plate. And the battery cable will be connected to that with that one single nut. The next step is to remove the battery hold down clamp. Each manufacturer uses a different style of hold down to keep the battery securely fastened to the vehicle. It's critical that the hold down is reinstalled the way it was designed. If not, the battery can slide around or in extreme cases in an accident, the battery could actually go flying around and this could be a serious safety hazard. Right, because these batteries are heavy and they can actually start bouncing around if the hold down isn't very secure. That could cause a short circuit somewhere in the system. And besides that, a battery that's bouncing around can cause enough vibration to start knocking the paste off the battery plates, which will drastically shorten the life of the battery. So it's very important to make sure that the hold down is reinstalled as it was designed. Sometimes there is a computer right on top of the battery or some other electrical device that'll have to be removed from the top of the battery and put off to the side. In some applications, you'll find a battery has a vent tube coming out of the side of the battery. This is actually used to vent the gases out of the battery so that they don't go into the vehicle. And now we can remove the old battery and its heat shield. Install the vent port plug in the hole on the side opposite of the vent tube. This plug should come with your battery. In most cases, it's attached to the positive post protector. And install the replacement battery and heat shield to ensure that the battery is reinstalled as it was designed from the manufacturer. Yeah, that's a great point. 
besides the battery itself, there may be a heat shield around the battery. And they come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and thicknesses. And you really need to put it back in. The function of that heat shield is to keep the battery, obviously, from overheating. It gets very, very hot in the engine compartment, especially when the hood is closed. Always put the heat shield back in. It is critical that the vent tube is reinstalled into the battery. The next step is to reinstall the battery hold down clamp and tighten the fastener. It's always a good idea to clean up any corrosion on your battery terminal and your cable connections. Next, reinstall the positive battery cable onto the positive battery terminal. Sometimes it might just be a good idea to take a picture of the assembly with your phone so you'll know exactly how to put it back together. But don't pound these terminals on as that can cause internal battery damage and tighten the fastener. Then, reinstall the negative battery cable onto the negative battery terminal. And tighten the fastener. And finally, we can remove our memory saver jumper cables. Many late model vehicles have to have their replacement battery registered or coded with the battery management system of the vehicle. Refer to the service and repair manual for your vehicle to see if this needs to be done. If so, check out our videos on how to do this. The links to them are in this video's description below.